Guys, welcome to the channel. This is Waga. We are going to continue building our Instagram clone and today we're going to work on a bit of the the search capabilities when you're looking for new users, right? And that's what we're going to do. Now currently where we left off is when we come to this button here and click on it, you can search for users and um, the user in question, I'm logged on as password. So if we type T, you get the user's email, right? And that's the code that's highlighted. That's test at gmail.com. Now, this is not enough. We, what we want to do is um, show the user's photo plus their name, right? That's what we would like to do. So for that, we could come to the H stack and let's just get straight to work. We could come to the H stack and we could get rid of this. And um, what we want is the image, right? And um, to use the image, we could come to the profile and copy this. We could copy the import SD web image Swift UI, like so. So we hit copy and we come back to user profile, I believe. Come here, paste it, because we want to display the user's image instead of their email. We just wanted to do this to show that the data is coming through from our backend, right? So how we would handle it is we could say here web image, like so, and for the URL, um, we're going to have a URL like so and um, the string we want is um, going to be user dot uh, profile image URL like so and we are pretty sure there's going to be something here right and um, if it comes down like this it means it has found a user right if it gets here so we could come here and we could add the modifiers and the first modifier is going to be dot resizable I have a video on images if you're interested but if you've come this far you probably know what all this is scaled um, scaled to fit should be the next one and um, the third one is going to be a clip shape we want a clip shape and the shape in question is going to be circle and um, we also want to give it a frame we could say frame like so um, Let's add a padding first. Let's add a padding, like so, and then come and give it a frame. And the frame we want is to, to give it is has a width, and the width is going to be 60, typing 50, 60, or put whatever number you want. Height, height is going to be 60, and the alignment, the align, alignment is going to be dot trailing like so so we do that and then after that we could have the text next to it the text is of course going to be the user dot username right and um the font in question the font is going to be dot sub headline and we want to embolden it we could say bold like so and we could save and um after this we want to put a divider so that if there are many users we can divide them divider and the problem with the divider is that the line is usually too faint right so you can remove the background color to see just how faint the line is and we could make it darker by saying colors dot black like so and um let's reload it and we can see the work of our hands right and if we come here we should see it so we come to the profile and we click on this button and um, we try it out with test we get test okay what is what seems to be the problem um, that's not what I was going for let's cut and put this padding after the frame right uh, sometimes you forget that the order of the you forget that the order the order matters right so we could save this and let's redo it and um okay let's come back here here and type a t and we get test yes that's what we want but it's it's in the middle we want it to be le to lean to the left right so for that we just come to the v stack and we could say alignment remember alignment will give you orthogonal positioning right so we could say alignment like by orthogonal i mean like um if you're on a v stack it will align them horizontally and if you're an h stack it will align them vertically right 
so alignment uh that's what the orthogonal means uh alignment is going to be um dot leading if we do that and we try it out again we should get it okay now i'm guessing give it a second come back here everything should be as it should be come here type a t type a t we get test and we get the divider and the divider is more visible because we are making it darker right and we can test it again we can sign out and we could come here and we could um sign in as uh, uh what's the, the other one is called test right the other user is called test you could say gmail.com and this is going to be password the password is password password and we hit sign in and um we come to this page like so he has zero posts and um we can come here and type p and we get password so basically our code works right this code that we have just written works and we can continue from there now there is an issue that crops up when we are trying to sign up a new user right so just to show it let's come here and create a new user and we can choose a photo um let's pick this one we hit choose we can call him thomas say thomas at gmail.com password Thomas, I uh, know password should be password, right? So that we can remember what the password is. We hit password like so. We, when we sign up, our we clear out our form, but we don't go anywhere, right? Um, we would like to correct this so that when we actually clear out our form, we can uh, head on up to the um, what's it called? To the sign in page and then sign in from there, right? So um. How we would do that is we'd come here we're in the sign up view of course and the first thing we're going to do is we are going to add a state variable we could say let me just spell it correctly state private var and this one is is link active and it's going to be a boolean we could say false like so and we would come down here come back down to our button and in our button first thing we do we could put um, that and then of course we have to put the brackets like that make sign up so that you can call it and after that we are going to wrap the button under a navigation link right so that you can send us back right so you could say navigation link like so and the navigation link we can put it and um, wrap it just before the alert we can put the closing brace like so and of course it's complaining because it needs a destination right so here we're going to say destination and the destination in question is going to be the sign in sign in view like so let's just remove the zero and um the sign in view and um the is ac the is active this is going to be bound to link is link active actually is link active like so and over here we are going to set the we could say self dot is link active and we're going to set it to true like so right in the button right so what happens now is after we hit our button we will go to our navigation link and we can try it out let's try it out um confirm that everything works as it should and of course we signed up um when you sign up we have to sign out so that you can see it so let's come back and we create another account so we create another choose a photo let's create an account with the name t pick this one and we can say tiago we say tiago like so and this is going to be tiago at gmail.com like so and the password is going to be um what's the password the password is going to be password of course uh and we hit that we should now see it cleared and then be sent to our sign-in view so we hit it and boom we come to the sign-in view right now um what we could do in the sign-in view right is we could check on whether or not we are signed in right and how we would do that is let's come to the content view like so 
and what we could do is we could copy this the environment um copy the listener function and the environment variable session like so hit copy come to the sign in um sign in view like so paste it up here like so and um what we want to do is that whenever we hit the button this is not necessary um this is actually not necessary uh when we are signing in um when you are returning as a user but it is necessary when you are signing in for the first time right so what we could do is um because when you move over to the next page it does not register that you're signed in right so when you go back it doesn't so we can't use on appear here right for some reason you try using on appear it won't work right so what we could do instead is we could come to the button of sign in like so put it in brackets like so come down we have to put this so that you can call it and after that we just call listen when you press the button it listens and checks whether you're signed in right so you could say here listen like so right so um because if we were to call on a peer it would not work like we are calling if we come to content view we're calling on a on a peer we perform the listen right and it checks and it notices that we're signed in right so if you do this if you do this um in theory it should work out right so let's just run it of course it will realize we're signed in because it will go to the content view when we start um but we're not going to do that you could call the content view something like initial view to make it clear right so we sign out let's sign out and create an account let's create an account with the name p choose a photo and um let's pick this one and the photo we could choose let's choose this and the name is going to be patrick Patrick, like so, and it's called Patrick at gmail.com. And the password, let's not think about it. The password is password. And we hit sign up, like so. And it comes to the sign in view, right? And now in the sign in view, when we actually enter our code and hit sign in, it's going to check listen and it's going to sign us in. Actually, we don't actually need to enter our code. All we need to do is hit sign in, like so. It's going to say, oh, please, oh, please fill all fields but it's actually going to realize that we're signed in but ideally you could enter your code then sign in i just realized that when i was doing it um perhaps a more elegant solution i don't know is it because it remains on the stack um i don't know so yeah so that's one workaround i figured out how to sort it out right but ideally a user would face to the sign in screen will just enter their their credentials and enter and and get our main page right so basically i think that um this video is a bit shorter than the others right but um works just the same we could come to the user view and see it and we could press p and we will get all the users i populated it with some users we have paul in password password two password one password three peter and paul right and if we take the t's we have thomas um test test tiago test test whatever yeah a, couple, a bunch of tests and passwords right so we have our users and um this method works so basically we have done um what we set out to do today and um this video is shorter than the others perhaps that means that the next one is going to be a bit longer than the others you know swings and roundabouts but anyway thank you for watching this um video subscribe to the channel if you're new uh leave a comment in the comment in the comment description and i will see you in the next video